I've got second place right behind me with less than 10 laps to go. I know he's faster than me. How am I supposed to defend my position against him? Well, I'll show you. Alright, we finally made it to part 4 of the Road Course Improvement Series. Today we will be covering defensive driving. Defensive driving is when you're trying to hold off somebody to keep a position. This is the case especially when you're trying to keep the lead. So how exactly do you drive defensively? Well I'll show you. It breaks down to three different parts of defensive driving. Defending dive bombs, holding the inside, and preventing switchbacks. So let's get to the first key factor. Defending dive bombs. Now most people would go into a corner side by side and think it'll be won by whoever gets to the turning point first. For example, the number two car is going to the braking zone with the intention of outbreaking the number one car. The number one car sees this challenge from the number two car and starts trying to outbreak them also. Which then it becomes a cycle and then they end up crashing because they went too deep into the turn. The truth behind defending dive bombs is to actually not defend them at all. Dive bombs while racing is the equivalent of doing spray and pray in an FPS shooter. You just gotta hope it works, and if it doesn't, you just mess up and you die. Whether that means, you know, you get shot in the head in the FPS game, or, you know, you go into the tire barrier. So it's better off not to defend dive bombs at all, because you'll most likely come out of the situation better than the other driver. So just focus on your breaking point, and don't focus on the other car. The second key factor of defensive driving is to hold the inside. It's the easiest trick to do for defensive driving in sim racing. By holding the inside line for the next turn, you can take away the preferred line from the car behind and make them challenge you from the outside, which 90% of the time won't work. So here's a good example right here. I know the car behind me has a good run, so I move to the inside line to defend my position. He has to challenge from the outside heading to turn 1. So I'm able to get a little bit layered on the brakes of him, and he knows that he ain't going to win that fight, so he might as well back out. He bats out, gets back in line, and I keep the lead from this. Something else the fan the inside is good for is assisting in blocks. An example is in this clip here. The 87 gets a good run off the turn, but I'm already moving to the inside. Because I'm already moving to the inside, before the 87 makes their move, I have more time to realize and react to his move. Once I do realize, I went to the inside wall, keeping the inside line. Now onto the hardest key factor to master in my opinion. Preventing switchbacks. Switchbacks, also known as crossovers, are when you go into a turn on the outside while somebody is passing you, then cut them back to the inside, you get a run off the turn, and pull up alongside that car that just passed you. So how do you prevent a switchback? The best way to prevent a switchback is by waiting a tiny bit longer to get back onto the gas in the apex of a turn. This will force the car behind to wait a bit longer to get back on the gas, and potentially giving you a better exit, and preventing their chance of getting to your inside. Here's another example. So, heading to the last turn, Watkins Glen, you can see me and the 87 are battling side by side. I can look in my mirror and I see the 87 is about to try to cross over, so I wait a little bit longer at the apex just to wait and get back into the gas. You could probably see by the miles per hour at the top of the screen that the 87 lifted a bit at the apex of the turn because he couldn't cross over without running me over. What makes the switch back difficult to prevent is the matter of who is behind you. It comes down to how aggressive they are and how fast their reaction times are. If a driver has a slow reaction time, he may not check up in time and run you over. As for the other case with aggressive drivers, they might just not care and think they're playing bumper cars and just run you over. Alright, I think that covers everything today. I want to thank everybody who's watched this whole series from start to finish. This has been a trip for me. Watching part 1's view count get up all the way into the 300's really meant a lot to me. And I'm glad I was able to finish this. Thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all whenever.